Alright guys, welcome back. It's time once again to talk about Charlton Athletic. Now, it has been a little bit of a busy week um, since last time we spoke about Charlton. Last time we spoke about how Billy Clark was a potential transfer target. That deal has since been done, although in the last week I said it was busy, but you would probably expect to see or hope to see a little bit more going on in the transfer window. But yeah, we signed Billy Clark. Um, I'm not sure how long he was signed for and what contract, but he, he, he signed. He's 29 years old. He scored, I think, 23 uh, goals in, tw in 93 games, I think, for Bradford. Not a bad return. He's primarily number 10, so sort of second striker or attack midfielder. Um, we haven't got too much there at the moment. You know, you're playing Ricky Holmes there a couple of times, who's primarily a winger. But um, I think it's a decent sign in just judging by his statistics and stuff like that. But as he's a number 10, does this leave us with too many strikers at the moment? So currently we've got Vettikelli, who's just come back. We've got Watt, we've got Novak, we've got Clark, Ajose, Maginis, and youngsters like Hanlon and uh, Ahern Grant. Now off the top of my head, that's already eight players who play pretty much up front. So you would imagine some of those are gonna go um, that I just named there. Probably people like Vettikelli, the ones that are on probably more expensive contracts are gonna go, I think. So presuming that we need sort of four or five strikers to go into the uh, season with, uh, number 10s and number 9s. With youth coming through as well, who are the two or three or however many players that you think should go? Who who should leave the club? I personally would say I'd like to see the back of Novak and maybe the back of Vettikelli just because I don't think he's got much more to give for us. Um, and I think he probably wants to play at maybe a higher level. I don't know. But Tony Watt is another one who I'm not, I'm not convinced with his attitude and things like that. Um, he hasn't been. He hasn't. He hasn't set the world on fire since he's come back. Is that is that a saying? I don't know if that's a saying. But either way, he hasn't. He hasn't really done much for us since he's come back, apart from score a penalty and like another one or two goals. It does look, judging by this tweet, that Tony Watt is going to be staying uh, potentially unless another club come in for him. But I think that um, he has got talent, but he hasn't just. He hasn't done enough. He, I saw someone earlier say that his head and his heart's not in the right place to be a professional footballer and they wouldn't be surprised to see him retire by the time he's 28. I'm not sure about that, but if he, this is his last, absolute last chance from now until January, I believe, if he's going to stay to prove himself. He's got the ability, has he got the attitude? A little bit more on the transfer front, um, we, obviously we haven't signed anyone else apart from Clark. Uh, in the last week, but uh, we have shown some interest in a couple of players. Richard Cawley saying here that we are already working on two transfers coming in. They are definitely not going to be, neither of those are going to be Marcus Madison, who Robinson has already come out and said we are not pursuing that deal. So that was talked about by, I think that was probably agent, uh, the agent or something. Um, but that is apparently not happening, Marcus Madison, which is a real shame. Quite a versatile, uh, young and athletic player that we're not going to get. Um, so a bit of a shame on that front. But uh, one player that we still apparently are interested in is the Rangers right back, Hodson. So that could be one of the deals that uh, Corley was talking about there. Not sure who the other one could be. Might be a player we're not sure about. Might be one of the, one of the um, lone players like Mavadizi or De Silva that we're trying to get in. Also, Lewis Page has had an injury this week. Um, another setback to his hamstring injury, which means he won't be back till the earliest October, which means currently if we were to go into the season, we haven't got a left back at all in the first team. Maybe Harry Lennon could cover there, but we definitely need a player there or two players ideally there. Um, De Silva obviously would be one of those if he came in, but yeah, Robinson was saying he wants two players competing for every position on the pitch. So uh, we haven't seen too much evidence of that yet, but there is a while to go, but I'm just, I just don't think it is looking quite how even Robinson probably anticipated it. Is he getting the backing from Roland? Probably not. Um, maybe financially, but there, there's just things that don't seem to be going quite right in the, on the transfer front. Uh, still nothing on Reeves, still nothing on De Silva and Mavadidi. But let's see, let's be patient. Let's give it a little bit more time. But what we don't want is another situation where we, where we go into the transfer window with a bigger squad than we come out of it. So let's see what happens there, like I said. Another interesting story that came out about Clark is that he actually never asked to leave Bradford. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe they spent a lot on trying to achieve promotion and now they can't afford some of the wages. I, I, honestly, I'm just... I'm just uh, clutching at straws here, but I really don't know what he's trying to get at by, by coming out with this statement. I think it's sort of a, a friendly farewell to Bradford, but the fact that he didn't want to leave, it kind of made me think, oh, like, do you really want to be at Cholton? But hopefully he'll, he'll prove on the pitch that he does. So with those two transfers potentially incoming very soon, we've also got one outgoing, and that is Chris O'Loughlin, the first team coach, um, one of the sort of network uh, coaches that came into our club who was tipped to be manager for a while. Basically, he's left... A bit of a bizarre move, if you ask me. I mean, Carol Fry did leave and then come back as the interim manager, so let's hope that it's not boding like that. But maybe this is to do with potential new talks. We had the Australians 
coming in with a, um, a bid for us last time, but Roland put us too high up in the, in value for a League One club when there are clubs like Bolton for a lot cheaper. I think he wanted 40 million and they were looking around 20 million, so that's literally like way off. So those talks fizzled out, but maybe this is signs that um, they're on their way out. I don't know. And finally, the World Cup under 20s had two ex Cholton graduates. Well, one ex Cholton graduate and one player who still plays for our first team. So Esri Konsa, congratulations. Adam Ola Lookman, congratulations. They are going to go on to bigger and brighter things. I really hope that Konsa will stay with us and help us get promotion and, and go on his journey in football with us. But you can't guarantee anything. I hope that he does stay. If he goes, we need someone in because our squad is just too small, even with all the players coming back from loan uh, at the moment. Even a lot of them are probably going to leave. So, um, yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if you want to hear more Cholton updates and Cholton videos. Uh, make sure you subscribe down below for that as well. And comment on the video if you have any sort of input about anything we talked about in this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. And goodbye. But wait. <laughs> There's another video here. So I just click on it, mate. Like, let's be honest.